Hello everyone and welcome to Byju's. Today we are honored to have Dr. S Y Kureishi, who has been former Chief Election Commissioner, a very noted civil servant, and also authors to many great books written on Indian elections. Welcome, sir. Welcome to Byju's. Thank you very so, much. So, sir, we are conducting a set of lectures for the students who are preparing for the personality test, the third round of the UPSC examinations. So, here we are honored to have your views. on various subjects various topics related to indian elections so sir the first question that i wanted to ask you is with respect to the indian elections which have been conducted so properly i mean such a huge country huge population so much of diversity yet every time we conduct elections very peacefully with all the things fairly and properly so sir what are the key features what makes it so special the indian elections and do we become a kind of role model for other developing nations as well it's absolutely true that the indian election is a role model for the for the world the world acknowledges it as such in fact the uh, many election commissions have called election commission of india as their guru hillary clinton described indian election as gold standard and uh, to acquire this kind of reputation Uh, the election commissioners have worked very hard but the credit goes to the constitution of india the framers of the constitution who created a great institution with uh, total independence and uh, total autonomy uh, once appointed the election chief election commissioner cannot be removed except through impeachment like a judge of the supreme court the status of the election commissioners also is that of uh, judges of the supreme court and the idea is that once appointed the executive uh, the appointing authority should not consider election commission as their subordinate and start giving them instructions and direction so there has to be a distance which is why election commission is not part of government of india it is part of the nation but it is not part of the government of india uh, uh, so that it retains its autonomy and independence which is why over 70 years we have acquired such great reputation that the world looks up to us and the proof is that uh, in 2011 i had set up uh, an institute called india international institute of democracy and election management basically to train our own civil servants our own election managers but once we had the institutional uh, framework we thought why don't we share our knowledge and experience with other countries and i'm very happy to say that in just about 6 years more than 85 countries have come to train from us and in half the cases their own commissioners the entire election commissions they have come and taking training from india the i triple i d e m although it has been operating from an improvised accommodation on top of the election commission building uh, we are going to move to our new campus very soon but till then uh, even with the improvised accommodation we have been able to give uh, this kind of experience and exposure to election management bodies and managers throughout the world so with respect to sir uh, if we have to go further on this resource utilization is also a big challenge so there is this concept of one nation one election which all of a sudden also again has come into the fore this is something that was uh, propounded by the election commission itself a very long time back also so what are your views on one nation one election you know this uh, one nation one election or simultaneous election this has been uh, uh, in the uh, limelight for the last 6 7 years particularly but it has been voiced earlier also it has both uh, pros and cons from the point of view election of the election commission this is the most logical thing to do the simplest thing to do because the voter is the same the the polling station where you go to vote is the same the machinery which conduct the election is the same the district administration and the security apparatus there is all the same the voter goes there and uh, he or she votes for three elections or one election uh, that is the question now basically if you go there and you press one machine for uh, the panchayat or uh, municipal body second uh, machine you press is the uh, vidhan sabha election for the mla and the third is the lok sabha for the mp so it makes sense many countries have a simultaneous election 
but in the indian context it is uh, not easy the reason why simultaneous election which were originally visualized in fact the constitution framers also thought there will be election only once in 5 years which is why they created uh, the, an institution with only one officer called the cec and they debated whether he should be uh, full time for 5 years or only temporarily appointed just before the election then they came came to the conclusion that since there will be by elections uh, off and on and uh, electoral rolls have to be kept uh, updated all the time okay let us have one officer full time you know that was the spirit but the uh, fact that the uh, uh, assemblies uh, kept on getting dissolved because the some government will fall here and there and the election got separated so even if we try and do it again the, this will happen again suppose we have created a, a situation of simultaneous election the lok sabha and all 29 states come to, uh, are formed at the same time what if uh, state assembly the uh, ruling party uh, loses majority and the assembly is dissolved what do we do with uh, all the other states and the lok sabha and say, same thing may happen in lok sabha it a watch by lost in 13 days now in 13 days uh, should we also uh, abolish all the state assemblies you know that is the question which is why uh, no solution has yet been found uh, prime minister said that uh, let it be debated and uh, the, the debate is going on some day if a solution is found uh, we can try but the election commission has already always supported it and it will be more easiest for them they'll and conduct one election and go and play golf for the next 5 years you know so sir uh, if we go further on the coordination between the election commission and the states many a times we do see during assembly elections state elections that some kind of controversies arise between the election commission and the states what can be done to ensure that there is a better coordination and there is nothing that happens there and very smooth conductions happen uh, you talk about coordination with the state elections yes sir. yeah you know uh, unfortunately many people don't understand that for the local bodies you know, yeah, that means the panchayat and the municipal committees Uh, there is a separate body called the state election commission yes. um, and they confuse it with the election commission of india uh, the federal body is called election commission of india we also have our offices in the state because we have to conduct vidhan sabha elections and our officers are called a chief electoral officers not a state election commissioners but all the time the media and the people are ge- creating this confusion they address them as the state election commission which is not correct the state election commission uh, were created in 1992 by the 73rd amendment of the constitution just to conduct the, the local body elections and they are constitutionally as important as the election commission of india with the same powers with the same privileges totally independent and we have nothing to do with them by the way we cannot just because we are federal we cannot give them any instruction or guidance of course once a year we have a meeting all india meeting uh, which we attend on their invitation but that is more uh, you know to exchange views and compare notes because we are both in the same business so uh, with respect to perception perception in democracy also becomes a very key ingredient so we know that free and fair elections are happening now what can be done further to make sure that the people of india also believe in the elections and they know that this is a fair and uh, equitable election this is a very important question you have asked uh, perceptions uh, in democracy are the most important people have to perceive the election to be free and fair which is why the in india we don't invite foreign observers uh, to conduct elections to certify as many countries do and they have to do uh, because it is the people of india who trust the election and their trust uh, is important and that is based on perception now the trust has to be earned and uh, the foundation for that was laid by mr sukumar sen who was an ics officer who conducted the first election with no previous experience no existing machinery he did uh, he created something out of nothing in fact uh, uh, we should uh, thank him as much as we can because uh, his contribution to election commission is much more than even on meter t n session 
who is uh, the most famous LC, C we have ever had. I would say that 80 to 85 percent of the election conducted today is exactly what it was uh, 70 years ago in 1951-52. Um, we have just improved and uh, our effort is that every election should be better than the previous best. Now in this the perceptions are important and the fact that we have we enjoy so much of credibility uh, the fact that they, we have had a smooth uh, transition of power, the losing prime minister, uh, losing chief minister, hands over the chair with folded hands to the winner. There is no ill will, there is no growl. I uh, always uh, in my presentation, I show a picture of two chief ministers, one of whom was a loser, the other one was, was a winner. And they're sitting together like best of uh, friends and laughing. And uh, although one of them is a loser, he is not sulking because they trusted the election. So the candidates trust the election, the people trust the election. That is what is important and which is what is missing in the US election, for instance. So I think that is something India should be proud of. And uh, the uh, 22 or 23 chief election commissioners so far uh, have been appointed. And almost all of them uh, have conducted themselves very uh, elegantly, very efficiently. There were uh, questions here uh, now and then, but general public trust in this uh, election uh, is maintained, which is what is most important. So, sir, to further on this, US elections, we saw what has been happening, that there has been so much of controversy happening. and nobody is accepting the result we have seen what uh, president donald trump had been doing so what went wrong there sir what was the problem and what could have been done there so that everything was so yeah, the first thing which went wrong was uh, Pre president uh, donald trump's own attitude even before he became the president you if you recall in uh, 2016 he started saying that whatever be the result i'll be the uh, the president I will not trust, I do, you know, he was casting doubts on the election commission, which was going to de declare him elected uh, if he was to be elected. So, ca casting aspersions on the institution which is going to elect you is the most uh, unfortunate thing, uh, which is what he did. And uh, I personally, if I have written uh, if, uh, two or three articles on Indo-US elections comparison, Indian elections are uh, much simpler, their uh, elections are more complex. But um, the uh, system of electoral college, I think, is uh, one problem with the US election. Uh, four or five times it has happened that uh, the electoral college elected you, whereas the popular vote uh, was actually more the, uh, to the opposite side. Now, popular vote uh, is a natural vote. One man, one woman, one vote. That is the popular vote. Electoral college is an artificial creation. That you know, one state and if it uh, wins uh, the majority, the entire state will be uh, declared uh, as, uh, as if they have voted for this person. Which is why in the 2016, Hillary Clinton had uh, got 30 lakh more votes. The popular vote was 30. And it was set aside because uh, of uh, an electoral college. And the, the, this time, of course, both electoral uh, college vote and the popular vote, they went in favor of Biden. I think uh, questions have been raised about uh, electoral college in the US uh, many times. And the time has come when they, uh, they should abandon it because it is totally artificial and uh, it's creating confusion. It has to go. The um, Second uh, thing is there is no central election commission in uh, USA, unlike India where the federal election commission conducts all the elections to the office of the president, the vice president, two houses of parliament and two houses of uh, state legislature, uh, all election conducted by one federal body which is extremely powerful, the most powerful election commission in the world. Whereas in uh, USA there are 10,000 bodies which conduct elections. Every county, uh, every state has counties and the counties conduct the election and mean, uh, they have different different rules. Now sometimes the question is asked whether the USA uses EVMs or not. Well, answer is yes and no. 
in many states, hundreds of states, the EVM is used and all kinds of EVMs are used. And in hundreds of them, EVMs are not used, ballot papers are used. So, this diversity uh, sometimes creates confusion because everybody is following his uh, or her, her own rules. You know, uh, it's there, therefore important a centralized uh, uniform body under uniform rules and regulations. I think is what makes the difference between India and USA and we are able to conduct the biggest election in the world uh, so smoothly. Uh, the results are out in one day. People trust the election. Uh, no questions uh, are ever asked. If, uh, individually some candidates may file an election petition uh, charging the, uh, the opponent uh, for ele uh, electoral corruption. Uh, but uh, otherwise, the credibility was, is never doubted. So, sir, uh, from time to time, once in a while, we do see that the question of paper ballot does come in India as well. That should we trust the EVM? Is it just a political issue, or should we be worried in some way or the other? Or EVMs have to be. Totally well, changed? you know, EVM have not come overnight. They uh, they were first introduced in 1982 in a constituency called Parur. And they're also just half the constituency on a pilot basis. They worked very well. And after that, political parties themselves started demanding that since they were so efficient and the results uh, came out so quickly, uh, why don't we use them? And uh, election commission said, uh, okay, we will develop the, those machines on larger scale. Uh, and like uh, every other country where uh, EVM uh, has been questioned, our EVMs were also questioned in the courts of law. It went up to the Supreme Court and Supreme Court said that you cannot use the EVM. Why? They did not doubt the technology. They did not mistrust the technology. They had a, a legal reason. They said in the representation of the People Act 1950 and 51, there is the, a mention of ballot papers. There is no mention of a machine. So something which is not mentioned in the law, how can you use it? include it in the law and he started using it. So we went back to the government to bring it in parliament and they amended the act and from 1998 uh, onward every state election uh, has been conducted with EVM and 2004 onwards every Lok Sabha election also has been held with the uh, EVM and uh, so every now and then every party at some point or the other has questioned the EVM. And with the same EVM, when they get elected, they just keep quiet, which is not fair. If you were doubting it and the same machine is declaring you elected, then you should say that that doubt was wrong. But at the same time, I would not uh, criticize their doubting. People have a right to doubt. People have a right to question. And it is our duty, the election commission's duty, to reply and give convincing reply every time. They, we should not say, though, we have already answered it 10 years ago, 5 years ago, and therefore we are not. Uh, if the question is raised again, we will uh, give the same reply again and again. We should do that because there's some, every time there is some new development because of which the questions uh, are asked. I personally feel we have been develop, improving the machines also. Now, the, uh, at least three the improve, uh, generation machines we had used uh, from 1998 till uh, 2019. Now the fourth generation uh, machines are being attempted. Then uh, there was a time in 2009, uh, BJP is, uh, is strongly opposed the EVM. Then they, uh, one of their supporters who is now a BJP MP, GVL Nasim Rao, uh, wrote a book called Democracy in Danger with a foreword by Mr. LK Advani. And uh, with evidence, with lots of anecdotes, episodes, they question the, uh, um, the reliability of the EVM. Or the, uh, naturally, the all political parties got suddenly disturbed and they started uh, making noise about it. I was the CEC then in 2010. I called a meeting of all the political parties in October 2010 and we asked them, uh, what exactly is their anxiety? What are their worries? It is very important to be in touch with them because if they are criticizing, they are not our enemies. They, they, they are the most important stakeholder. We must sit with them and find a solution. And there, it was, I think, Mr. Chandrababu Naidu who was leading this uh, agitation. 
and they said if you start using VVPAT, voter verifiable paper audit trail, we, it will bring in transparency and we'll be satisfied. Believe me, in the same meeting we decided, okay, we will have VVPAT. We uh, immediately asked our two companies, Bharat Electronics Limited, BEL in Bangalore, Bangaluru, and uh, ECIL, Electronics Corporation of India Limited, Hyderabad, to start developing the, the VVPATs for us. We also have a committee of independent experts. Uh, there are five professors of five different IITs. We are a technology illiterate. We don't know anything. My subject was history. My colleagues, uh, somebody was from English, somebody from other subject. We uh, don't depend on our knowledge, but uh, these IIT professors, they know what they are talking about. We said, you supervise the development of these uh, VVPATs. July 2011, we, uh, when the machines were ready, according to these two companies, we said, all right, let us do a whole day long exercise with them, a mock election on them. And we chose five uh, different cities representing five different climatic zones. One was uh, through Ananthapuram as a coastal area. One was Jaisalmer as uh, a desert. Um, we uh, picked up uh, Leh as a mountain. Delhi as a normal city and even uh, Cherapunji as uh, the very rainy in the region. There were lots of uh, bugs and problems. So we said, take it, go back to the drawing board, improve the machine. Exactly one year later, exactly in the same month of July in 2012, in those five locations, another mock uh, trial was done and this time they worked well. Immediately we ordered 20,000 machines. On, uh, with which we did uh, pilot here, there and everywhere. Uh, it worked extremely well and then we said, all right, we go to scale. And by then, that's a case by Mr. Subramaniam Swami, which was in Delhi High Court, went up to Supreme Court and it came in Supreme Court in 2013. Mind you, in 2010, we had already ordered the factories to start making the machines. In 2011, we experimented with the machine. In 2012, we ordered the manufacture of the machine. So in 2013, when the case came to Supreme Court, we reported to the Supreme Court our progress. So in their judgment, they have appreciated election commission's efforts and directed not us, but the government of India that give them money, make sure that they have enough money to, so that they can conduct 2019 elections with uh, complete coverage with VVPAT. Uh, it took some time for the government to sanction these funds because the funds were quite large, about 3,000 crores plus. Uh, we waited one and a half hours and we were very worried because about 20 lakh machines in five years uh, is a tall order anyway, of which we lost one and a half years. But uh, I must appreciate the two companies. They uh, uh, came up to the challenge and they manufactured all these uh, 20 lakh machines in time for the Election Commission of India to conduct a 2019 election with 100% VVPAT. There are some questions that have been raised about VVPAT. I personally feel that is uh, where Election Commission made a mistake. Uh, they uh, did not, they should immediately have called a press conference and answered all the questions. Uh, any delay uh, creates problem of perception. That is the question which you had asked and which I had said is very important. Because, you know, when political parties raise doubts and questions, it is comparatively easy, very fairly easy. We call them, talk to them uh, across the table and half an hour, one hour, five hours, we come to a conclusion. Uh, because we have the same interest, the same goal. But once the public perception gets distorted, uh, percolating down to the last person's mind becomes uh, very difficult. So, which is why we should never be slow in our communication. The lesson for, to learn is we should be very prompt in communication before it, the public doubt becomes a common uh, public perception. We should have the answers. So, one question has been about corruption that we have seen. And uh, one way that uh, we say is that when we talk about election funding, the fundings also actually become uh, maybe a window towards corruption. So how can fundings be handled? We also have the electoral bonds. So how do electoral bonds come into the picture? Do they make the system more transparent or how is it? Yeah, you have raised two, three questions in this one. Uh, 
Uh, you know, basically, we had uh, two major problems, uh, crime and money. Uh, there used to be a lot of election violence, 100 day, hundred murders on the poll day, or uh, days leading to the poll, that was quite common in states like Bihar, Bengal, UP. Uh, in many states, money was the bigger problem. So, this uh, crime control we uh, achieved about 20 years ago. Now, not even a drop of blood uh, is expected to fall in the election. The various steps were taken, which I can elaborate if you would like. The other issue was money power. Temporarily, in 2011 and uh, 10 and 11, we had success because we had set up expenditure monitoring division in the election commission which worked uh, very well in the beginning. You know, we started seizing money from the hotel, from the, the uh, farmhouses, from the, uh, the different places. In my book uh, called An Undocumented Wonder, The Making of the Great Indian Election, there is a whole chapter on money power, how we were dealing with it, how much we have controlled. And there I have listed 40 modus operandi of abuse of money how uh, money was being carried by the ministers, even police officers in their car because nobody will dare to catch them. So we started catching all of them. The money was being carried in uh, ambulances. Now who would suspect ambulance carrying the money? Uh, money was being distributed and with liquor uh, through marriage parties and uh, mundan and birthdays and you know all these kind of bogus ceremonies were taking place. So we saw uh, the the modus operandi of, of this different kind and I listed 40 of them. Now uh, there may be many more. So um, money power is uh, according to me is the, is the only unsolved problem now. All other problems have been uh, controlled and we have to work a little harder and the uh, political parties also have to show willpower. One reason why the money is a big problem, which Prime Minister also expressed concern about when he says the repeated election means repeated uh, expenditure. They, while there is a cap, there is a limit on the expenditure which a candidate can incur. Uh, for Lok Sabha, for instance, it is 70 lakh. For Vidhan Sabha, it was last was 28 lakh. But there is no uh, ceiling on the expenditure by a political party. Suppose you are a party candidate, you can spend 70 lakhs of your own, we give you a check. What about 7 crores or 70 crores which the party is spending on you? It does disturb the level playing field. So now that is something which is in the hands of the politician. They can do it in 5 minutes. That from tomorrow, there will be a ceiling on political party expenditure also. They can, can't spend more than X amount on a candidate. Straight away, the expenditure will come down. So, they, there has been a lack of willpower. One uh, suggestion which has been made repeatedly that there should be a state funding of elections. Uh, several committees uh, have been set up on this and they always came to the conclusion that a state funding of elections will be a good idea. And the last one was um, uh, in 1998, uh, Indrajit Gupta committee. And they said that there should be state funding provided, provided there is an internal democracy. There are fair, free and fair elections within the parties. And in the, secondly, it should be limited uh, funding. Now, I personally feel that the state funding of elections will not solve the problem. Uh, because uh, even if we give you a check, what about the, the black money which will be used? The best will be to... Uh, adopt a state funding of political parties, not of election, not of the candidate, but of the party, and that too after the election, on the basis of the votes that you have got. I have calculated for every vote, we give you 100 rupees. Now in the last uh, general election, uh, about 60 crores uh, votes were cast, so which means 6,000 crore rupees. Okay, we give you a check for everyone, every candidate. Will this be enough? My answer is yes. And how do I say yes? Because all the collection of all the political parties in five years which they have reported is 4,500 crores. If with all your effort 
and most half of it is illegal just arm twisting if you are collecting only 5000 crores or less here we are giving you 6000 crores with dignity by check and but then private donations will be banned you cannot take any money from everyone particularly the corporate because there is no free lunch if the corporate the companies give you money surely they want something in return contracts licenses bank loans with the with the you run away so which has been the subject of national debate i think this is one reform which the government of india the politician the leadership should consider but 70% countries of europe have this system is working very well and there is no reason why it will not work well in india so sir is there something that can be further done to strengthen the entire process of the electoral system that we have in india yeah i think our system is great no doubt about it but then uh, one of the features uh, one of the reasons for our uh, good work is that we are always learning we never thought oh we have arrived we we know everything we are always learning which is why as i said our effort is that every election should be better than the previous best but three four basic reforms although about 50 reform proposals are pending with government over a period of 20 years or more but i would say that if four reforms are uh, undertaken uh, the system will be stronger one of course is the appointment and uh, removal of the election commissioners we should be we are the most powerful commission in the world has the most defective system of appointment we are just appointed by the government of the day i was also a beneficiary of that system but i would have felt stronger if leader of opposition had also signed my appointment letter because then there would be no scope no possibility of anybody raising finger that this guy is partisan say for so and so party appointed him so he must be doing favor very bad to hear to hear so the government of the day appoints just anybody this is the only country in the world which does that in other country there is a, a collegium we are familiar with collegium after all all the judges are appointed by a collegium that is of the judges the cic chief information commissioner chief vigilance commissioner they are appointed by a collegium headed by the prime minister leader of opposition and one more minister and a chief justice of the the supreme court so the most important constitutional body which is the election commission does not have a collegium that is surprising and it can be introduced it's a, just a question of uh, government deciding to do it so similarly while the chief election commissioner cannot be removed except through impeachment the other two commissioners uh, can be removed theoretically although no one has so far been removed but the two commissioners feel they are on probation which is uh, not a healthy uh, situation the uh, safeguard against removal was provided to the cec in 1950 because it was a single man institution the that uh, safety from removal was for the institution and not for the individual now one individual has become three individuals there is a cec and from 1993 it's a multi member commission three member all three should be the uh, provided that protection so that the two commissioners should not feel little unsafe you know they keep looking over their shoulder if i don't do well will the government be happy unhappy with me will i be elevated or not this is a very dangerous thought they should know that uh, once once appointed through a collegium they will get elevated because of with by, by their seniority automatically this is very important in an appointment and removal of the commissioner second is now ideally there should be a ban on those who have uh, uh, criminal cases pending against them heinous offenses rape dacoity murder kidnapping and corruption uh, but there is a legal question uh, whether um, uh, you can be debarred unless you are convicted because the uh, indian law uh, has presumption of innocence uh, uh, which means you are presumed innocent till you convicted although i have a counter question which nobody has ever been able to answer while the judges and juries were present in the audience and my question is that in indian jails today we have 4 lakh prisoners of which 70% are only under trial which means not yet convicted but 
four of their fundamental rights have been taken away. What are the fundamental rights to liberty? They are in jail instead of being free. Freedom of uh, 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 movement from here to there. Freedom of business, wherever they want to do, whatever work they want to do. Right to dignity. Now, these four rights, uh, fundamental rights have been taken away of innocent people within the ambit of law. After all, they are not illegally detained. They are detained under the law. So, why is it that the right to contest, which is not even a fundamental right, why cannot be suspended for some time? So, this can be done. But till that happens, what stops the political parties from not giving them tickets? They can decide, yeah, we will give a ticket to no one who has a heinous offense, uh, crime case pending against him. Then, state funding of political parties, as I mentioned, uh, that should be introduced and private donations should be banned altogether. Uh, you know, for the last uh, so, so many years, we are hearing, you know, corporate uh, f funding and financing the government uh, and the election, that's not correct. And fourthly, internal democracy should be taken more seriously, internal elections of a party. And if they are not held, there should be fines for uh, every week's delay. So, because party is internal democracy is uh, extremely important for electoral integrity. So, sir, the last question that I had was for all the aspiring civil servants who would be going for the interviews. So, what are your messages for these people? What some do's and don'ts if you have for them? Well, uh, uh, I think the hard work, there is no substitute and uh, perseverance. Even if uh, they don't do well one year, they should remember that uh, there have been people who failed for three or four attempts and in the fifth attempt topped the country. So, don't give up. Don't give up. Once you are sincere, you are serious and you are work hard working, uh, you will make it. Um, and of course, they study systematically, uh, distribute your time over different subjects. And particularly this subject of democracy and uh, study the constitution or the major issues of, in the constitution, uh, democracy, the government, uh, because this in any case you have to understand as citizens of India. So, hard work, perseverance, I think are the two things. So, one last thing about the civil servant. What is their role in the election? How important is their role in the elections? Again, a very good question. You know, the same civil servant who is uh, contemptuously regarded as babus, babus, you know, they dismissively. Same civil servant. You know, how many people conducted the last general election for us? 12 million. 1 crore, 20 lakh people, all government servants. All civil government servants and uh, could be dismissed as babus as inefficient, lazy and corrupt, but which is not a correct perception. Now, once they come under the Election Commission of India and we make them do the, this job, zero er error is uh, what we allow. Because if you can commit an error, there has to be a re-election in a booth. And re-election means 1,000 people of the village uh, who may have come from even outside, they have to be called back after three days. It's just, just 200 will not be able to come back. So, which means you have uh, denied them their voting right. So, because of the seriousness of this exercise, uh, the fact that same civil servants conduct a error-free election year after year shows that the, they have basic merit. They have uh, only thing we have to take work out of them. They, we have to discipline them. Uh, there should be zero tolerance for uh, partisanship. And how we ensure... Uh, the neutrality of the, the civil servants, that is uh, the trick that we know because we belong to civil service ourselves and we we know who exactly, we keep a dossier on every officer and just as the election is announced, uh, you know, we have a transfer policy we, uh, according to which we immediately uh, remove the people about whom we have the slightest doubt. But again, the using your word perception, a public perception is that this uh, DM or this SP is not honest or is aligned to a particular party. We have no tolerance for him. We have removed chief secretaries, home secretaries, DGPs, and in one case in UP, all three together, uh, because uh, political parties, opposition parties came to us and gave us proof 
that these guys were not uh, fair and non-partisan. So we want uh, this machinery to be totally neutral, totally above board and deliver without corruption and uh, with efficiency. So the civil service is who, who runs the election. Then this is a question we ask, we are asked internationally. In most countries, uh, they keep civil servants out. They feel that civil servant will not be neutral. Our perception is our civil servant only can be neutral. Because for two things, one, he is permanent. The government come and go. He is permanent. Secondly, we have him by the collar for the next 35 years. If he is, uh, does something uh, irregular, uh, we take action. His uh, career will be in, uh, in jeopardy if he uh, violates the discipline of the Election Commission of India. So our uh, experience tells us that the, the best people to do this job is the civil servants and the evidence is before all of you. Thank you so much, sir, for sharing all your views on Indian elections. So this was Dr. S.Y. Qureshi sharing his wisdom on all the aspects of Indian elections. I hope that this session is very helpful for you for the upcoming examination. All the very best. Thank you.